All right, Robbie, I want to go big distance. Give me the drivers. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back with another video and we're gonna try something like a little, a little series out here for you guys. So it's gonna be a three week series and I have people all the time that are like, all right, Robbie, I wanna go big distance. Give me the drivers. And so we look at these courses and we think, well, I should be throwing drivers all the time. I, if I'm on a tee box, I throw a driver, that's what I do. But I think that there are so many intricacies to learning how to throw putters well and mids well and honestly throwing drivers with a little more touch rather than just get out there, grip it and rip it. Bah! Here's what we're going to be doing. I'm going to be playing the same course over three different videos. I'm going to play the front nine here at Civitan Park John LeMaster Disc Golf Course. And I'm gonna play the front nine. The first time, I'm only gonna have putters. The second time, I'm only gonna have mid-ranges. And then the third time, I'm only gonna have distance drivers. Like, I'm not even gonna put fairways in the bag. This is how we're gonna do it, and we're gonna see what the scores are and what lessons we can learn while we're here. So, I'm gonna shoot some shots, and uh, we're gonna throw it over to the booth for some commentary while we do this. Here we go. Hole one is a pretty textbook shot to open things up. It's a very open fairway, and you're going to look for a standard hyzer finish, avoiding the OB of the parking lot to the left of the basket, as well as the sidewalk behind. So hole one, I'm not trying to do anything too crazy. I don't have a driver, which is what I normally throw on this hole, so I'm not trying to saw off all of the distance. I'm just trying to throw this out there at 370 feet, Honestly, if I can saw off 250 of it, then I'm looking at a classic and standard upshot, taking my par and walking away. So I think that's a mistake a lot of people make is they try to bite off too much than the disc can handle. Like I said, I'm landing, I'm probably about 130, 140 away from the basket, maybe a little bit more, but standard upshot for my harp, I'm just gonna play it on a nice forehand and try to land as close to the basket as possible so that I'm really not putting. We'll take it. Mission accomplished. I'm just gonna mark this, pick it up, back off of my mini so I'm not standing on it, and bang, bang. We're starting things off with a par in our putter only round. There we go. Hole two is one of the trickier holes on the course. At 358 feet, it is a doozy. You've got a tight tunnel, pretty much the entirety of the hole, eventually making your way down to the basket, avoiding a chasm to the right. Now, this is the disc that I normally use on this hole. I'm throwing a heart because I'm really, once again, not trying to bite off the entire fairway. I wanna just make it around this turn so that I have a clear look up to the basket. But because we're doing it for the YouTube, I'm gonna to try to go a little more aggressive than I normally might. And I do a really bad shot. As you can see, I fall off the tee box and you're gonna find out I don't have a good landing spot. That's kind of weird. I found that chasm off on the right and there is no look out of there. So I'm just trying to throw a tomahawk or something crazy to try and get back out to the fairway. That's all I'm looking for. This shot moves maybe 50 feet and I just wasted the shot because I had to play too aggressive. And that's the key is don't try to play super aggressive at times because you're gonna set yourself up for a struggle later on. This is pretty textbook, it's 125 feet and I'm just gonna throw my Fusion Warden right down the middle, a little bit of a flex and put it in range right outside the circle, trying to close out that par. I do like that this is a par four. Some people probably would argue it's a par three. If it is a par three, I think it's a really tough par three, but a very gettable par four. One of the more difficult holes followed by an easier and attackable hole. It's a tunnel still, but really once you hit this gap, it opens up pretty nicely with the basket finishing off to the right. Really a simple forehand shot if you have it or for you lefties, a nice hyzer. I love my forehand. If you've watched my videos, you know I like the forehand. So here, I'm just looking at a nice, easy forehand with my heart. Thankfully, in a putter only round, this is what I throw here normally. So hoping to actually get a hold of this, 
The problem with this hole is that it's very short. That 220, you feel like you have to put a little power on it. And as you can see here, I felt really good about that. I pured it or so I thought. But when you get out to the basket, you see that I'm probably 40, 45 feet away from it, maybe farther. I don't know, maybe closer. So really having to dial in to try to hit this putt because this is one of those holes that I love to get a birdie on. Definitely one of the most attackable holes. Bang a rang. Not worried for a minute, JK. I was super worried. Hole four is probably one of my favorite holes on the course. You have a couple of options here. You can go with the big forehand and skip down to the basket, or you can play something that turns over just slightly and you'll find the basket on the right. Like I said in the hole preview, this is probably one of my favorite holes on the course, but normally I'm throwing a mid range. So I'm trying to not bite off more than I need to with this putter. And I can't say it enough guys, you wanna make sure you're not trying to push the disc farther than it needs to go. I left myself pretty short and I'm thinking of my last shot. Oh man, well I made that putt and not listening to Nate Perkins in my previous video and living the story of my round and of course, I tried to be a hero and I ran it big and didn't get the butt. Not too scary though. I'm probably 10 or 15 feet away. So just go line this up, try to drain the putt, walk away with my par. We're sitting one under par, which feels awesome in a putter only round. Hole five is a doozy coming in at 393 feet. Longest hole we've played so far. Fairway bends down into the right and the basket hides down in this tricky alcove. So this is a hole that surprise, surprise, you don't want to push more than you need to. If you try to bite off a ton and turn something over, those woods on the right will absolutely devour you. So honestly, all I'm trying to do is just throw a putter straight. It's 393 feet. So if I can get 200, 250, I'm looking pretty good to try and make a run for par. And that's all I'm asking for. It's downhill, so let that play to your advantage. With putters, I really, on anything 300 and shorter, I'm trying to play for a birdie, but 300 and out, a birdie might be a little tough for me. I feel really good about that upshot. I lined it up, I thought through it, and I had a pretty clear open look. And as you can see, this turns out to be one of the easiest pars that I get all day long because I really focused on that upshot. Hole six coming in at 250 feet. You got a lot of junk on the right side, but this is an island hole. If you don't land inside of these rocks near the basket, you will have to head to the drop zone. And don't worry, it's a lot farther than 250, it feels. I hate this hole. This hole is the absolute worst. 250 is the biggest lie that has ever been told and I missed this so many times trying to play this island. So I just went for it. I said yellow and I grip and ripped that putter and thankfully that tree knocks me down. You can see here Michael demonstrating if you miss the island, you have to go to this drop zone. It's like a 30 foot putt. So I'm just inside. I think I would have been closer maybe if I hadn't have hit that tree. But I really, I'm just trying to calm my nerves here. Whenever you guys find yourself in a putt that you didn't think you'd have for birdie, take a breath. That breath allows me to knock in this putt and grab another bird. Hole seven feels really tight off the fairway, but you do have some options. You can play the overstable disc over to the right or something understable and flip it on the left side. And eventually you're gonna make your way down the hill to the basket. I really like my line here with a verdict, something a little more overstable, but I all of my putters were too overstable. And if that's the case, just try to throw straight, guys. The beauty of putters only is that it teaches you how to throw those straight shots. If you can throw straight shots with a putter, you're gonna be able to carve up or at least par most courses that are out there. And that's all I'm trying to do here. This course can get really tricky and I'm just trying to throw them straight. And like you see on this tee shot, threw it straight and actually threw it surprisingly far. I'm past the basket, which feels great to grab another bird. Hole eight, only 255 feet, but it comes uphill the entire way. You're gonna have to navigate quite a few trees to find the line. And there are a few guardian trees sitting right around the basket. So get ready for a fun time. 
I'm at three under right now and feeling like a rock star. And here's where I make the mistake. I live the story in my round. I go super aggressive and nope, Treza's not on my side for this shot. Honestly, I, and I'm telling myself there, Robbie, you're a dummy. You went for way too much. That's not the disc you needed to throw. I didn't try to throw a straight shot. I tried to throw a hyzer with my harp that would get all the way up to the basket. And it put me pretty far out with a tricky, got to throw a super straight shot. So thankfully I've been working on those and I throw it up there. I was trying to lay it close so that it could slide in towards the basket, but I didn't give it enough height and therefore I left myself with a tricky putt. Mm. Once again, didn't fully commit, but the second guy is going to step up and know that he needs to give a little more oomph. And of course, this second guy nails it because we all know this feeling. The second guy is way better than the first. Hole nine having the super gutsy line off to the left or the I'm scared hyzer line off to the right. You can guess which one I'm going to go for. Yep, I'm scared. Big hyzer, you try to play off the hill and avoid the sidewalk, which is OP. Like I said in the hole preview, I'm actually not gonna play that line straight down the middle. I'm gonna try to play the big hyzer, and I didn't throw the disc necessarily that I thought I should, but I decided to throw it anyways and try to make up that bogey on the last hole, which is a mistake. I throw this out big, nail that tree, and get punished, honestly, as I should get punished. I tried to push on these last two holes, putters beyond what putters can do. And that's the problem. If I want to throw those shots, I need to step up and throw mid ranges. And if I don't have mid ranges to throw, then I need to be okay with the distance that my putter is going to give me comfortably. If I want controllable distance, I need mids and putters. I stepped back there because I thought that the shot was closer than it actually is or farther than it actually was. And it left me a pretty long putt that I miss. So I'm unfortunately going to end my round getting a bogey on eight and nine, which was pretty bad considering I had been bogey free up to that point. Why did it happen? Because I tried to do things with this that they weren't meant to do. You're going to see in the next two rounds that that was really a theme throughout the entire process, but I really enjoyed this putter rounds and I enjoyed where my straight shots are feeling. All right, so that is going to wrap it up for the first round uh, with putters only. Disappointing in there with the double bogeys, but as you heard in the commentary, it's really, I decided to get aggressive rather than playing for what the discs do. And uh, yeah, so hopefully taking those lessons, moving on to the second round with the mid ranges. So hope you guys enjoyed that, learned a lot. And uh, what do you think? Do you think I'm gonna shoot significantly worse, better as we get higher speed discs? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like, uh, just supports what we're doing, and that way you know when part two comes out. So, looking forward to seeing you guys next week. And for now, I'm gonna leave you with the birdie.